everyone. Uh, Paul from iDry here. I'm with uh, David from Varna, Illinois of Perfect Log Homes and Kiln Services. And uh, David, we started talking three or four or five, six months ago, and you called me up and said, hey, uh, I think I got a good opportunity to make some money drying, which is <laughs> a phone call that I get all the time. They see everybody's cutting wood, nobody's drying it. Um, and you did a really good job of taking that idea, setting it up, getting the kiln, building your book of business, and then now you're booked out and have repeat customers. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of our customers are guys who were in your shoes of, hey, I see the opportunity. I think if you could help share a little bit of how you made that a reality, the way you went about it and be super helpful for them. So yeah so for for me it all started with uh you know what we we're what i was doing before the delivery uh, obviously first i yep. made the decision to actually get one <laughs> which was sometimes the hardest decision <laughs> how and did the yeah. hardest is actually put money down knowing yeah. that it's gonna come and <laughs> um and then you guys were letting letting us know you know hey this is what you need for your shed and and also mentoring with uh, some other guys um uh, ed in particularly really helped a lot yeah. with helping me figure out is this a good option for me you know and i hope that i can get to the point you know uh to where i can help people like ed did too where guys that are you know wanting to do some drying can you know i can help them at, the, at that point too but yeah you know you you let me know what i needed to do and i took a lot of really cold snowy winter days to start cleaning out the 30 years of stuff collected in the shed that i was gonna put this in yeah and uh, i got a call from you guys and said hey can you take it now instead of six months from now <laughs> it so, does happen we talked uh, about that in the financing video that that does happen if a guy can't yeah pay, you get bumped up so so as soon as i made the decision to make the down payment i was already essentially and I, even before the down payment i was feeling out the market i guess just even see if that was something that had any interest in my area yep um and did you start, how did, how did, so, you, do that? did you start calling uh, Sawyers or, or how did you start feeling out that market? Before I even did that, I, I really needed to make sure because the last thing I want to do is make this big call list or be talking to all these people and have those opportunities. And then it falls short or has a dead end because I'm not ready for any falters. I'm not ready to answer any questions. So yeah. They don't even know if I'm serious or not. You know what I mean? So I wanted to present myself like I was already doing it yep. before they you know because everybody can everybody can sense i mean you, everybody that's listening now has either bought something or would you know wanted to buy something and they could tell if that person was serious about it or if they wanted a service done or you know their deck built or something they can tell mm -hmm. who they're talking to and when they're talking to them if that person's actually legit mm -hmm. uh, i looked on the university extension and they have a list of foresters and sawmills and things like that that you can go through. And so I just printed off pages of that list. And then I got another list from, you know, like Wood Miser or any other of the portable sawmills that all these guys were getting. Yes. Uh, yeah. If they have a directory list, then I got on those and started going. Some of them were on the same list. And so I just got these piles of paper. Yep. And every night after work, you know, when I thought most guys were off work, I just roll through the list and check people off. And if they're yes, no, maybe yep. um, if they're a yes, I'd kind of give them some information. Uh, I already had some type of uh, kind of payment plan and quote system. So I would send them like a, a questionnaire or uh, it was more like a form that they could fill out on what they wanted to dry, you know, and then kind of give them an idea of how good the eye dry can actually work compared to other ways that uh, they even might've been drying their stuff themselves. Yeah. And you, I mean, you had your perfect log homes website set up. So it was kind of nice. You could just add this service onto that website. And um, uh, we do have 
some companies that can help guys build basic websites if that's something that they need. But yeah, basically being all set up as a company. So you're right. As you present yourself, you're a business that that's doing this. You aren't just feeling it out, which was mm-hmm. very successful for you. Yeah. yeah if you want to, if you want to make serious money, then you need to take your business seriously. That's right. Yep. And if you want to, you know, just do it as a hobby, then don't expect anything more than just hobby money. Yep. But buying a, hundred thousand dollar kiln is kind of an expensive hobby (laughs) (laughs) yeah you want it to uh work for you and make money so you placed the deposit we had a a little bit of a lead time and did Mm -hmm. you already have customers who were ready like lined up to do drying so when it got delivered you could load it up or was there a little bit of a gap in between that for you how did that work i had i i've already i was already essentially and it was nice. Yeah, it was nice that I already had my own, you know, perfect log homes. And I I was had some type of clout that I already knew something about wood, yeah, which helped. Um, but no, I, I reached out to so not only the like the, the directory lists for sawmills, I was also going and calling, uh, you know, people that I knew that were loggers, you know, mm-hmm. what are they doing with their wood? Where are they taking it? Who are they taking it to? What is their contact information? You know, never create yourself a dead end. Always, you know, find somebody else. If they're a no, maybe they have somebody else that they know of. So any, any, I've already taken the time to be on the phone with them. Yeah. If they're going to tell me a no, I at least need something out of them to make that. Yeah. Uh, who, who else can you refer, you know? Write everything down, keep everything together. Um, but Facebook too, I was on marketplace and everybody that was selling stuff, I wanted to know where they had it dried or if they had it dried and how they had it dried or just air drying them, or they were, you know, doing a dehumidification kiln or solar kiln or stuff like that. And so I was already prepared with that. I, I think you should mention before you do the same thing. If you go to a flea market or a farmer's market and you see people selling live edge benches or cutting boards, I always like to ask the question, Hey, how did you dry that wood? You know, who dried that? Mm-hmm. Wood? And um, it's gotten pretty good leads that way as well. So. Yeah. So my biggest lead actually was just because I was taking time, uh, you know, scouting, I was on Facebook marketplace and I just saw a guy that was selling just a, just a shed load of wood that over the years has been accumulated. Well, the woman got remarried. I was talking to the new husband, Mm -hmm. Uh, her late husband passed away and they had a tree uh, business and they milled all their own trees yep and so they had all this stock piled up in their shed for what and so uh, because of the connections that i was making i actually made a connection with one of the suppliers that uh, does a lot of woodworking in one of the cities nearby and hooked those two people up and so he went and he essentially bought the whole shed yeah i mean it was uh you know, retail market fifty thousand dollars worth of uh, saw and lumber. Oh, that's a once. And a he needed all of it dried. Yeah. And I mean, I'm getting a lot of it, and they're they have markings on it. Some of the stuff has been air drying since 2007. I got a load in right now of uh, quarter sawn red oak that was milled in 2007. And it was still 15%. Yeah, it's crazy. We we use that whole one year per inch. I was just talking to another guy who had some walnut slabs that he got that had been in a barn for years. And it was 6% on the outside or 7%. Mm-hmm. And he cut into it and it was still 15% moisture content in the center. So just shows the need for kiln drying and actually getting the wood dried. So many people say, well, I can just leave it outside and it, or leave it in a barn and it's good. And that's not always the case. So yeah, finishing it off in a kiln is, is super important. Yep. Yeah. And I just working with log homes and knowing what type of pests can be in the wood and can lay dormant for a long time, Yeah, uh, whether it be powder post beetles or just certain larvae and you can wake them up 
at any little bit. I mean, the wetness of stain can, you know, yeah. moisturize and wake them up. Um, but yeah, I, I use the deep pin uh, Delmhurst yep. moisture creator first because anything on the surface, I mean, this stuff is so dry on the surface that it's, it's, it's gonna, everybody's gonna think it's dry, right? Absolutely. So, so uh, yeah, so it's safe to say you're, you're pretty busy. Your kiln's pretty busy. You have customers lined up and things are going good. Yeah, so it's, you know, if you, honestly, with the market now and everybody, you know, buying certain wood products, you have a choice of either, yeah, you can dry everything for everybody else, or you can dry what you need to make to sell. And, you know, cause I kind of did it both ways. How much cost, how much or how many board feet do I need for my kiln to pay for itself first? So that's the race to get it paid for, right? I'm putting pretty much 95% of everything I make right now just to pay the kiln off. Yep. Um, just because after that, I can be, I can Gravy. be free, but you can either have a big customer base or you can make your own stuff and sell it. And everything that you sell there can make you more money. Like if I dried everything and sold everything out of my own kiln, I'd be, it'd be paid off way quicker. Right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So there's two different options. Not all everybody is, is set up to sell that much. Yep. Um, but you know, it's, yeah, I, I'm, I got people that are uh, coming to me too, just because I'm, I have that online presence as well. And I got uh, smaller customers, actually one customer that I, that called me uh, because I put it up on my website before I even had the kiln. Right. And I had to tell him that I won't be able to fit him in the schedule until such and such date, you know, because you guys told me it wasn't going to be until August. And <laughs> good thing I was ready for when I come in, right? Because then I called them back and said, hey, you know what? I yeah. got an opening. <laughs> I'm going to be able to dry your wood at such and such time, which, you know, I wasn't lying to him about anything. I just uh, yeah. let him know that I can I can offer him the drying service a lot quicker. Yeah. And so didn't... even though I didn't actually, you know, have somebody. Yeah. Didn't you have somebody who actually offered to pay more money to bump it up in your schedule, but you still didn't have the kiln delivered yet? So you Yeah, that was that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he had two 16-foot, four-and-a-half-inch, uh, probably about 28 to 30-inch wide walnut slabs. Yep. Both of them, and they were kind of curvy, yep. so they both barely fit on the five-foot wide bed of the the i dry plus and he was wanting to get those done because he was making like a table for like a wedding gift yeah or something. but i think everybody gets the uh the gist of you do you did great marketing you did a lot of legwork up front you put in the work you made the calls you made connections with a, a a wood buyer and somebody selling wood and then that guy said okay i'll have you dry it to make that connection and mm -hmm. um yeah they even have their own dryer so they're <laughs> having me dry it mainly because i made that connection yeah <laughs> so, yep. so, so they're still making money off me yep. first so does everybody else that wants to pay you money, right? They want to know that where their money is going is uh, um, where they can trust. So yeah. Absolutely. That I had here. Is there any other questions that you had for me for everybody? No, I think uh, that covers uh, that covers getting a kiln business set up and, and making connections and keeping it full. And we really appreciate you taking your time and chatting with us. And yeah, keep on drying and keep on rocking it. All right. Okay. Appreciate it, Paul. Thanks Thank you, for the David. interview. Take care. Yep, thanks.